this is my bonus episode for you to help launch a spooky season on Third Eyesight on my day trip to Salem, Massachusetts. Salem is most well known for its Salem witch trials in the late 17th century. I share about my day trip to Salem with my best friends, Alex and Natalie Namaste. And I think it's just such a great way to help launch the spooky season in October. So let's hear about my day trip on Third Eyesight. My name is Juan Francisco and I'm a psychic medium and tarot card reader. I've always been curious about the supernatural, the paranormal, and psychic abilities, and I'm here to share my stories and interview folks who want to share their own stories with us. Let's get to it. So as promised, I am releasing a bonus episode on my day trip visit to Salem, Massachusetts, here in the United States. Now, The promise was made to folks in my Instagram broadcast channel. I had asked them, which spooky season episode do you want to hear first? And I had a list of different episodes that they could choose from that I was already planning to do. I just wanted their input on which one first they wanted to hear on Third Eye Sight. And the majority of them chose my Salem day trip. However, the first Wednesday in October, which was when I wanted the first spooky season episode to come out, was going to be two days before my actual Salem visit. So I wasn't going, I would not have already visited Salem by the time I wanted to record the Salem episode. So the last episode was on angel numbers. And I decided, well, let me do this day trip to Salem and I'll release a bonus episode and still make this one of the two first, (laughs) one of the first two spooky season or October episodes. And this will be like a extra first episode, quote unquote, in between episode to still kick off spooky season. So I'm sorry for the mix up, but as promised, this will be a, oh, this is a bonus episode focused on my day trip to Salem. So for those of you who are not based in the United States, Salem, Massachusetts, it's, uh, well, the city of Salem is in the state of Massachusetts here in the United States in the Northeastern part of the country, specifically the New England part of the country. And the Salem witch trials are what really made this town buzz in history, in U.S. history. So I'm going to read a short excerpt from Smithsonian Magazine from an article from 2007 by Jess Bloomberg. The Salem witch trials occurred in colonial Massachusetts between early 1692 and mid-1693. More than 200 people were accused of practicing witchcraft, or I'm going to paraphrase so-called the devil's magic. That's what they call it in this article. And 20 were executed. In 1711, colonial authorities pardoned some of the accused and compensated their families, but it was only in July 2022 that Elizabeth Johnson Jr., the last convicted Salem quote-unquote witch, whose name had yet to be cleared, was officially exonerated. Since the 17th century, the story of the trials has become synonymous with paranoia and injustice. Fueled by xenophobia, religious extremism, and long-brewing social tensions, the witch hunt continues to beguile the popular imagination more than 300 years later. Now, I had learned about the Salem witch trials through Arthur Miller's play, The, the, the Crucible, which is a very famous, well-known play, and it's a really great play. And the reason that he wrote the play The Crucible was, from what I learned, in response to McCarthyism in, I believe, the 1950s. And this is why. During the Salem Witch Trials, it seemed to be, according to Arthur Miller's play and some other things I read in history class and English class, it seemed to be that the way they determined if someone was a witch is, well, they would tell somebody, you're accused of being a witch, Prove to us that you're not a witch. So it was more like guilty until proven innocent. And I believe that there's this old uh, saying that the way they would check if someone was a witch is that if uh, they would tie rocks to somebody and then put them in the river, and if they drowned, they weren't a witch. And if they rose to the top, they were a witch, if I'm remembering that correctly. Now, you put rocks around anybody, 
and put them in a river and they're going to unfortunately drown. So what a terrible way to test someone was a witch. And if they were to drown, they're like, oh, I guess they were not a witch. Oops. Like <laughs> horrible, awful. And so it felt like no matter what you did to prove that you were not a witch, to try to prove that you were not a witch, you were not listened to because the accusations were listened to way more than your reasonings for saying you're not a witch. So the crucible addresses that tension and that conflict, that that injustice in the way the trials were run. And during the McCarthy era, people were being accused in the United States of being part of the Communist Party or being aligned with communists abroad. And it was the same energy of if you were accused of communism, you were immediately put on like a red list, uh, like you were put on a list of, of people that uh, – to be – a list of like a warning list or a list of folks who were going to be um, barred from uh, or uh, under the watchful eye of the government. Like Lucille Ball, Desi Arnaz were one of those. Some other Hollywood folks were put on that list. And it didn't matter how much you tried to say that you were not a communist or or that you weren't aligned with it. If you were accused of it, you, you were under suspicion. And it was – I think he was a senator. Senator McCarthy was well known for a really – fueling that energy in the 1950s which is why it's called mccarthy it's been called mccarthyism so that's why arthur miller wrote his play the crucible about the salem witch trials and released it during that era as a as commentary on what was going on in the 1950s with mccarthyism very interesting at least to me it is and so that's some history about salem and there's so much more to salem massachusetts than just the salem witch trials but that's the reason it is such a popular town in u.s history and today they really capitalize in salem on that history of the salem witch trials and i don't mean capitalize as in just take advantage of it like they truly celebrate the witchy the witchy history and now we don't really know if these folks were witches during the salem witch trials they were just accused of these of, of these activities but I guess there are some folks that do believe, yeah, there were there were actually witches. And it's very possible there were actual witches during that time who did their thing. But it seems like it was more of like a witch hunt for something that wasn't really happening at that time. There are many theories that uh, – I remember watching a documentary in, in U.S. history class in high school about the Salem witch trials. And there are theories that maybe they were all eating bread – that had a certain mold in it that made them hallucinate. So when people in the town started seeing these young these young women hallucinate and young men hallucinate, that they were channeling the devil or Satan. And other folks believe that some people were eating some mushrooms that were hallucinogenic. And at that time, they didn't understand what was happening. Uh, the people who were seeing these folks hallucinating and just thought it was witchcraft. So there's so many theories as to why these reports of of people convulsing and seeing things, why these things happened. So we don't know if there was there was actually witchcraft going on or if it was something biological or something environmental that affected these people. Regardless of all that, today Salem really celebrates the witchy energy and they really take pride in 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 the kookiness and the kookiness, the witchiness of the history of the town. And so you go to Salem, Massachusetts, and there's so many witch-themed things around. There are restaurants and bars named after uh, werewolves. Uh, one's called, I think, Br- Briar Wolf or something like that. Some restaurant called that. Uh, the witches brew this and the cauldron this. And so many metaphysical shops and crystal shops and sage shops and, uh, well, crystal and sage shops and uh, all the above. All the above is there. And what's interesting is walking in Salem. This was yesterday that I went. So I'm recording this today, the day after. Walking around yesterday, I, I realized, wow, there's so many metaphysical touch points in, in town and so many stores. And it's almost like when you live in a place like New York City where there are quite a few metaphysical shops, not a, a whole bunch, maybe at least, I'm, I think there are at least seven or eight in New York City proper. And you pick like your favorites among the seven or eight. In Salem, Massachusetts, there are so, there, there have to be at least 10, at least 10 or 
12 in that town. That's what it feels like, at least. And they all offer very similar things. Some have different vibes. Some specialize in certain things. But you feel like you have such you have different places to go to based on what you want. Whereas in New York City, they're all pretty similar, save for a few very important exceptions. So it's so cool to be in a town where it's kind of like the norm to have these kinds of shops around. So that was cool. So I'm going to quickly walk through how my day went. So it was a road trip. I went with my two best friends, um, my best friend Alex, as well as my best friend Natalie, who goes by Natalie Namaste on Instagram. Give her a follow. She's Natalie with two E's at the end, Namaste, because that's what Instagram allowed her to use as a username. She's great. And so she is just obsessed with Salem, Massachusetts, and she loves going. And two weeks ago... Uh, They both told me they were going for the day, and I thought, oh, I really want to go. And they said, like, oh, well, come with us. But honestly, I invited myself before they said that. So (laughs) I said, I'll take the day off, and I'll I'll go. So at the very last minute, last minute being two weeks ago, I decided I'm taking a Friday off and going with them to Salem, Massachusetts for the day. So we left New York City at around 6.30 or 7 a.m., and we were there in Salem from maybe 11 a.m. until 7.30 p.m. And it was a three, three and a half hour drive from New York City and back to New York City one way, you know, each way. And while we were in Salem, uh, the first thing we did, we uh, went to go get pizza at the Flying, I think it's called the Flying Saucer, delicious pizza. And they're known for their pickle pizza. Now, when I heard that there is something called pickle pizza, I was like, that sounds nasty. That sounds weird. They said, just try it. And I did. And it was actually really good. Really good. After the Flying Saucer, we went to a couple metaphysical shops as well as a coffee shop. We went to uh, Enchanted, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous shop in Salem. And it is queer owned. It is owned by, uh, I believe, or maybe it's managed, queer managed. Managed by a gay couple. I believe they own it as well. It had been opened by a witch who is now in in her senior years, and I think she has handed it over to this couple to manage the store and really take take a lot of leadership roles in the store. Amazing, gorgeous store. Got myself a Gemini tote bag. Um, We also went to a place called, I believe it's called Artemisia. I'm going to actually look it up. Um, Artemisia or Artemisia Botanicals. It's like Artemis with I, uh, Artemis. IA, IA at the end, Artemisia Botanicals, really lovely little store. I got a tarot reading done there. I got a 30-minute reading with someone named Mary. She was really awesome. So if you're in Salem, Massachusetts, go to Artemisia or to Artemisia Botanicals and, and get a reading with tarot card reading with Mary or a tea leaf and tarot reading with AJ. They were really great. My friends Alex and Natalie got readings with AJ. Oh, AJ and Mary also. I had Mary and I think uh, Natalie had AJ and my friend Alex had Mary as well. And we had pretty nice experiences with our readings. And after Artemisia, we went to... We went back and forth to Artemisia because we had readings at different times. But we also got some coffee at... I think it's called Jaho. J-A-H-O. It's a really cute coffee shop. The the baked goods look really nice, and the, my coffee, I like my coffee. I got an iced mocha. I got an iced mocha, and it was really good, and the setting was just really lovely. It was it felt just so cozy, and then after that, I don't know if, if we did our readings after that at Artemisia, but we did go to a haunted house. I believe, according to this haunted house, they said it's the, the, the last remaining haunted house with live people in it where people jump out at you and stuff. I had never done a haunted house before, and this one was – now, when I say haunted house, let me rephrase, reframe this. I've been to haunted places and haunted houses, like paranormal investigations. When I say haunted house, it's like the the theatrical – they're putting on a show for you, haunted house. People are jumping out and scaring you. Things are popping up, you know. So it was one of those. I've never want, done one of those. I've been always too afraid of them, and in this one, I was definitely really scared. I'm glad I did it with – Alex and Natalie, I was the last one behind them, following them as they were going into pitch darkness and being, <laughs> it was really funny. I, I, I just, I do not like being out of control 
in a place like in a room especially if it's if it's almost pitch dark things are jumping out at me i don't like that crap but i did it because i thought what the hey let's do it i'm in salem it's almost halloween and the both of them told me that was like nothing compared to haunted houses they've been through that are truly terrifying so um maybe one day i'll do one of those really uber terrifying very large haunted houses performative haunted houses but i don't know we'll see and then after that, we went back into like the heart of the town because the, the haunted house, Artemisia and Enchanted, they are not in the center center of Salem, but they're like a little bit um, like maybe like a five minute walk from the center. So we went back to the center of town and we went to a couple more metaphysical shops. I- I'll be honest, there were there were two metaphysical shops that we went into that felt more like like town gift shops. And I literally told Alex, I said, this feels like a 7-Eleven, but like new age and for those of you who don't know what a 7-eleven is a 7-eleven is like a one of our big chain gas station convenience stores i didn't like the vibes and the more that i go out i'm starting to not like being in crystal shops where the crystals are just put in buckets for people to run for people to run their hands through like it just it, and then the lighting was weird it just, it just felt like being like in a in a dollar store or just like a regular convenience store with really weird for like fluorescent lighting and lighting whatever i'm being really particular but it just felt so crowded it felt like a souvenir or gift shop rather than like a a place to respect these items that were like sage crystals tarot cards just didn't feel so respectful to me and i did buy a few things in in one shop that felt that way because i really loved the things they had there i did buy two tarot card keychains which it's not the same as a tarot deck so the, the amount of respect for keychains is like whatever right and i did buy two little um candle candle dishes like candle saucers to put a candle on and they're so pretty. One is a um, has the constellations of some of the stars, and the other is like the moon in the middle with like designs. It's really cool, and I can't wait to put my little ghost candles on them for Halloween. So yeah, I went to a couple metaphysical or several metaphysical shops, and I have to say, out of all the ones I visited, um, the ones that I really loved were were well, number one. Enchanted is a wonderful shop in Salem. Just it's just the way they put it all together, the lighting, the colors, their organization, just absolutely gorgeous. And then Artemisia is a, a smaller scale shop, but it's equally as as pretty, and the vibe is great. Those two shops have incredible vibes, I have to say. And uh, I really recommend looking into getting a reading in Salem because there's just so such a concentrate um, a concentration of of psychics and intuitives there. And she's so cool, right? It's just so cool. And that's the other thing I want to say is being there, I felt like people are proud to fly a freak flag and proud to seem a little witchy or totally witchy. There's some queerness that is out in the open in Salem. Um, it's just, but more, more than anything, it just feels like, oh, I'm not the only person who's into all this stuff. Now, of course, there are so many people who listen to this podcast who follow me on Instagram and Facebook, et cetera, and TikTok. And so I know there are other people interested in mediumship and and are curious about crystals and the esoteric and the metaphysical but it just feels different when you're in person somewhere and you feel like you're surrounded by people who are really interested in this stuff. And it's like, wow, we're really not alone. Like there are people to meet who are into all this stuff. And it's just so cool. And I think in a place like New York City, and it's interesting because because Mary at Artemisia Botanicals in my reading, we talked about building community and in my reading. And we um, mentioned, we talked about New York City and she even, she said it really she's put it best then new york city you would think there'd be a tight community of of whether it's a coven of witches or intuitives whatever it is but it seems like it's hard to find and i told her well it's like there's so much there and wherever we're all just spread out and it's a little we're like it's there's an oversaturation so it's almost like when there's when there's so much choice and so much so much of it in new york city because there's so many people in New York City, it's almost harder to find and and pinpoint the people that you can vibe with. So you really have to build the community or seek it out. It's really seek it out, which is what I'm doing right now, which is an amazing, an amazing 
um, thing for the reading to validate because it did. She mentioned building community in my life. And I am through my mentor, Daisy. I'm going to mention her by name now because I've tagged her on, on Instagram. Uh, my mentor, Daisy, who has this Earth Angel crystal shop that I've been going to really often. I'm starting to build community this way through her and through the people I meet at her metaphysical shop and healing center. And so what's different about a place like Salem, Massachusetts is that it is definitely, it feels like a town and it feels a little smaller and everything's closer, physically closer together in one, uh, one area, at least in my, in the two times I visited there for day trips, it, it just, that's what it feels like, at least. I haven't been there for the long term to really know if there's more on the outskirts of Salem. But it seems like closer to the center of town, everything's so concentrated there. All these psychic intuitives and witches. And it just feels like it's easier to meet people there. So what's the last thing we did? I think we just walked around town in Salem. Um there are some landmarks that we didn't see this time, but like there's the witch's house, which is where some of the trials, uh, some of the trials or pre-trials of, of the witch trials occurred there. It was the house of, I believe, either a judge or someone in, in politics in the colony at that time in the, in the 1600s. And there's some other landmarks um, that, that we didn't see that we'd like to see next time. There are some cemeteries I want to see, or at least one cemetery I want to see next time. But I guess this is just a whole episode, sort of like a free advertisement for Salem, Massachusetts about Salem, Massachusetts. I was not paid to share any of this info. I just wanted to share my exciting day trip there. And I just highly recommend it. If you're in the in the United States, it is a little bit out of the way. I'll give it that. But if you're in the United States and you're in the New York City area or in the Boston, Massachusetts area, and you're down to visit Salem from New York City, you can drive there three and a half hours, or you can take a train from New York City to Boston, which is like just over four hours, then a, a, a smaller train system from Boston to Salem, which is an hour. If you're in Boston, easy. You just drive from Boston or take the train from Boston to Salem. It is such a wonderful town to visit if you're into all this stuff. It is a cute little town. It's aesthetically very charming. And there are a lot of older colonial buildings and there are a lot of brick buildings. It's just such a cute town. And I can't wait to go back. I would love to one day go for two or three days to just really feel it out. And and hey, this just dawned upon my brain. Maybe in the future, I'll do a mediumship show there. How cool would that be? Like a mediumship demonstration, do li- a live group reading there. That would be really, really cool. That just dawned upon me. We'll see. Or do- dawned, dawned on me. That just dawned on me. Dawned on me. Here's the English major talking great English on his podcast. So there's our bonus episode. And I'm glad I got to quickly record this and release it immediately because the the visit to Salem is fresh in my mind. And if you have any questions about Salem and want any recommendations, feel free to hit me up, DM me, send me an email. If you've been to Salem, I want to hear what you think of it and about your experiences there. There are some haunted spots in Salem. I have not visited them. One, one of them being the, ha- the Hawthorne, the Hawthorne Hotel. I did go into the lobby to use the restroom, but that's it. But if you have any stories of your time in Salem, whether they're paranormal stories, ghost stories, or just how you enjoyed your visit there or didn't enjoy your visit, let me know. Email or DM me. Before we go, I just want to share that I have been, uh, I've been considering my reading schedule for my booking tool on my website. And I have decided to co- uh, to bring back weekend time slots for readings and a few weeknight options because I'm thinking that for folks who don't have a lot of time during the weekdays, that a weekend time slot might be easier to book for them. And I mean, that just makes sense. So I brought back Saturdays as a day to book me for a reading. And if you have any questions about readings also, you know, DM or email me. And what else is going on? Ah, ah, one more thing. And how can I forget it? I'm going to share more information on this 
on my Instagram and all, all my social media. But on Friday, October 20th, I will be live in New York City in person at Earth Angel Crystal, which is in Long Island City in the Long Island City neighborhood of New York City. Just one stop away from Grand Central Terminal. In other words, one subway stop away from Manhattan. And it will be my debut as a medium doing live group demonstration. I did a practice demonstration a week, almost just under a week ago, this past Tuesday, like five days ago. And it went really great. And that was a practice run with some folks that the the owner of the store, my mentor, Daisy, some folks she knows. But this time on Friday, October 20th, it will be the real deal, me in front of uh, an audience of maybe 15 to 20 people doing... um, doing mediumship and doing readings for a portion of that group of people. So if you're interested in getting a ticket for that event to come see me live in New York City, you can check out the link in the show description of this podcast episode. So thanks for listening to this bonus episode of Third Eye Sight on Salem, Massachusetts. Did I say that right? Salem, Massachusetts. It's Saturday, y'all. I need to rest. I love you all. Thank you for your support. I'll see you on the next episode. If you have a question or topic you want me to cover on Third Eye Sight, head to my website, juanfranciscospirit.com slash contact and send a message my way. If you really enjoyed this episode, leave a review wherever you listen. I'd really appreciate it.